Welcome everyone to District 5 Office Hours, which is our informal meeting every other month. So one meeting, one month we have the official District 5 meeting, which is has a proper agenda and, and a more formal agenda rather. And this is the other month where we have a more flexible, open, informal agenda where we share what we are doing and updates and we it's an opportunity for you to share what's on your mind or questions or ideas. And Anna, do you want to say something? And Anna is in the car trying to get parking, so we may not see her till she gets parking. I'm trying to also promote other people to panelists. Well, wow, that's a lot of pressure on people who are managing this. Like we have to promote people to panelists and whatnot. Hmm. Um, so. Okay, there's still no way. Okay, so Angela, do you want to share the your page or how did you want to do that? Yeah, so I am going to share screen. So the your counselors are using a new service from UMass. And if you want to participate in this, what are we calling it, Mahmood? Community click. Yeah. Community click. So I would ask you to open up your web browser. Well, that's not where we want to go. So you're going to go to www.amherstdomain.gov, which is the face page for our town website. And here we are in the beautiful town of Amherst. And I ask that you just scroll down all the way down on that face page to the community calendar. And we're going to click here to highlight all of our community events on this last day of March. And you'll see there's a circle around the number 31. Here. Just... So we're going to click on the number 31 and it brings us to this event. And here we are at the District 5 office hours. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. So. Mm -hmm. If we click where it says community click feature, it brings us to the portal for this feature. And I'm assuming that I want to click on I'm an attendee. Uh huh. Yeah. And I'm picking District, District 5 office hours at the very top. And I'm choosing, it says the town of Amherst is committed to help the community. In order to understand and address our community needs, we need to hear your voice. Please help us by introducing yourself and engaging with the town. So, so I live in South Amherst. Right. And only the first question is required. The others are optional. If you want to answer, you can answer. Otherwise, you can just, just leave click it at submit. That. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. And, and so, Mamu, do you want to? Take it yeah. from here or go ahead. Absolutely. Um, so okay, and then we'll just give me a moment to just let people know, just make sure that sure. everyone is on board with what, what's happening here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because we've just had people and we're suddenly showing them websites and links and graphs. So um so again, welcome everyone. Um we uh as Angela explained, uh we're collaborating with UMass Computer Science Department to try some new technologies. Uh, to engage um, and make create safe spaces for different people in our community to participate and engage. So one of the tools that we are trying today, and hopefully we encourage you to try it out so that you can give us feedback, is this community click, which is basically a way for people to, while we're having uh, a discussion, you can anonymously 
um, click on this and react to the discussions that are happening. So you could cl click agree, disagree, or this is really important to me, or I'm confused or unsure. So those are the different reaction buttons you can click. And then there's also a way to, when you click on the arrow, I believe, there's a way for you to even comment um, and leave a comment anonymously there, right? So if you want to offer a comment and it'll be completely anonymous. Yay, thank you, we thought so too. Okay, um, so that's that for introduction. And Angela, do you want to close the screen? Unless anyone has any questions with any of this, and then we'll just introduce Mahmoud and have him say a few words. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments at this point? And if anyone in the uh, who's in the attendees wants to be promoted to panelist, please just raise your hands and we will bring you into the room. Okay. All right. So people are still coming into the room. Welcome everyone. Mehmood, if you'll just wait for a few minutes, maybe um, Anna and I can just go over, introduce, do something. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a couple exciting things happening that we can definitely talk about um, mm -hmm. while we're getting, while we're waiting on more folks, if that's what, if you want to. Mm -hmm. Does that sound good? Cool. So, um, hi everybody. So I think I've met most folks on this call, but for those I haven't met, my name is Anna uh, Devlin Gothier, and I'm one of your District Five counselors. Um, and so while we are getting this set up, uh, just to give you maybe a little bit of, of context too, this is something that um, this this tool is one that we are trying in a lot of different areas, and the office hours setup was a great place for it because it's a little less formal. Um, it's a little lower stakes and we can really get feedback in the moment from you all as well. Um, so throughout our conversation today, we will we'll be testing it out and seeing how it works. Um, I want to apologize. I'm sitting in a very parked car. I am not moving. I'm not driving, but um, I am coming to you from a car. So I apologize for that today. Um, things happening in town from my end. Shawnee, do you want me to start and then you can kind of jump in? Yes, so a couple, a couple things. Um, first off, if you have not taken the um, active communities survey um, that is focused on seniors making how to make Amherst a dementia friendly um, and aging friendly community. Please do that today. Today is the final day to do that. Um, and that link is up on the Amherst uh, MA website. The other thing that is really exciting that I did today is the community development block grant survey. Um, and that is up on Engage Amherst. And that is helping us to figure out how we should prioritize those community development block grant funds. Um, and I see a question or comment from Tracy. Tracy? Hi, um, it's act this is actually just a facilitating like technical question. Is now that you've elevated us to panelists, we can't put anything in the Q&A and there's no chat. So <laughs> only people who are in the Q, only attendees can ask questions in the Q&A. So like yes. if I wanted to make a little comment or something and not interrupt you or I can't do that. I, I know. <laughs> I know. Yeah. No. No. It's okay. We um we we learned that last time. It's one of the challenges of this is that we either can see everybody or everyone has a, access to a Q and A. And honestly, the Q and A is the thing that gets hacked the most um, or Zoom bombed the most in in my recent meetings. And so um, please feel free. I guess I will happily set the norm for myself. Of please raise your hand and interrupt me at any point. Um, and I know that not everyone is comfortable doing that. And so also please feel free to email us with questions if you're not comfortable asking them in this um, in this setting. And I apologize, There's it's kind of one of those no perfect uh, no perfect solutions. No, in things. my experience with Zoom meetings, and I was on Zoom most of today, but we've also, I've run a lot of conferences on Zoom and stuff, is that mm -hmm. you could actually control the Q&A pretty well. And you could set mm -hmm. it so that the, questions that are asked in the Q&A are only published when a panelist says to publish them. So it's and the we, chat we that's do more likely that. to get hacked. But I think if you're letting us all in as, mm -hmm. I don't know. Anyway, 
I mean, no, you can no, have I a do. Q and A and chat going at the same time. But. Right. Um, the the thing, the feedback that I believe we received a lot was that people really like to see each other in these district meetings, and so. Um, in the webinar style, the only way to see each other is if you're all promoted to panelists. Um, and so that was one of the challenges. Um, the chat is set up so that attendees could do it, um, could ask questions uh, and, and see answers. But as you said, uh, panelists cannot ask questions. Um, and, and it's, they've been Zoom bombed. Um, it's, which is just hard for the folks who are panelists. That's all uh, with folks asking questions like last week. Um, yeah, no, I'm with you though. I, I also run large team events for, for my job too. It's, it's um, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but can I thank also, you. Sorry, uh, can I just maybe have um, Mahmoud um, go into the attendees who's, so Mahmoud is here from the UMass Computer Science Group who's helping us try out the Community Click app. And maybe Mahmoud, if I can send you to the Q&A, uh, to the attendee group, and then you can share the link on Q&A that everyone within the panelist can click on, and that will allow us to chat as well as share your comments uh, and your sentiments during sure, the discussion. Sure, I can do that. Okay, so I'm gonna just send you back into the change role to attendee, okay. There you go. Let's go here. And Chalini, while you're doing that, I'm going to jump onto my computer so that I can actually really yes. be here. Okay, so what Mahmoud is going to do is hopefully be able to share in the Q&A. Let me see, I'll keep my Q&A open and there isn't anything yet. So he's going to share the link to, oh boy. Oh, yay, we do have something open one. Is everyone seeing the the Q&A? Can everyone see what Mahmoud has posted? Yes. So if you click on that link, then very quickly you can join this community click website, which allows you to then share comments and we can just open that window on the side to I know it's not very smooth but um, since we are trying out different technologies that's the whole point is in this informal way you can provide feedback about this technology so the first question can everyone see the Q&A and the, the link okay great awesome Angela if you needed to leave, I would totally understand. And you're most welcome to stay if you want. So uh, for those of you who don't know Angela, here, Angela Mills, she is uh, one of the community participation officers. And she makes amazing cookies. I do know those two things about her. Um, so Shalini, do you want to ask a question and, and have people try answering something? Uh, we can talk about community engagement as a question, like what, um, what um, it could be a question, it could be a comment or, so the question could be how can, how satisfied are you with the engagement in our community or what could we improve? How can we get more people to participate in our district meetings in our commit, you know, in our town council? Uh, how do we get, because it's generally a few people who know about these meetings, even the district meetings and, or, or when we're discussing policies that impact people, how do we get more people to know about that and so then, so you're saying that in order to, sorry, this, so this is also just for everybody else's knowledge. This is also my first time using this tool. So um, you were saying in order to do that and not submit just a multiple choice, you can, I found you click the little arrow on the side and then it opens mm -hmm. a comment box. Right. So there's a little carrot arrow on the side. And then if you want to submit your response there. Right. Yeah. What are um, some okay. ways we can uh, get more people to, um, know about our meetings, to know about the, the policies we're discussing in our committees and council, 
Um, what ideas do you have and what can you do as a resident as well to let more people know about these meetings, why it's important for people to stay in the know. So any comments, ideas are welcome. And Mahmood, I'm promoting you to panelist if you wanna come back. Come back. Okay. Um, so we are here. So one comment we got is I'm loving the engaged Amherst page on the web. So great to check out the progress of the projects. That's awesome. So that has been an amazing innovation um, by uh, Brianna and her team, the communications team in the town office that has created the engage website. How many of you here know about the engage website that you can just raise your hands. It's just a few of us. Awesome. Yay. Let me see, does everyone know? Yeah, because that's a cool website where we are adding some of the projects like the Hickory Ridge project is there. So if people want to share their ideas and whatnot, they can do that over there. Um, agree. Okay, so, so yeah, as we're discussing about engage website, if anyone feels like, oh, we really like that, you could discuss, you could, um, basically action. So, Shani, are you able to reset those, um, tallies? Because I have a couple of questions I can ask. It might be interesting to see. Yeah, definitely. You want, I don't know. If, so I think it, it's by timestamp. So, um, Member, if you want to answer that. I don't think we can reset it. It's like based on the time when the topics are happening, it'll show us the, I think. But why don't you go ahead and we'll see, we'll find out. I think Mahmood is still in the attendees. I think you need to promote him. I did, I've promoted him a couple of times. Oh, it's weird. Um, okay. He, hold on. I think he is raising a hand. Yes. Allowed to talk. Remember, are you able to come in? Remote panelist. Hmm. It says he'll be rejoining the webinar as a panelist. Okay. While we are getting that set, I want to just again, you know, let folks know this is an opportunity to chat with us. These are much more informal um, sessions. And so we don't, if you'll remember last time I had a whole slide deck, I didn't do that this time. I will not do that every time, but um, I, I, I will do it. Now. I think I'm going to try to do every other. We're going to rotate. So um, we'll have, we'll have office hours and then we'll have an official district meeting. Um, so we have a couple littler updates. Um, the, the one I am most excited about is that, well, that's not true. I don't want to, I don't want to rank order, but one I am very excited about is that since the last time we talked, we closed on Hickory Ridge. Um, and so that's something that I'm, I'm so excited to, um, I know some folks worked incredibly hard on that and it was, um, it was a feat. So, uh, that will be moving forward. And again, some folks mentioned Engage Amherst. Um, please go on there. Hickory Ridge is still on there. There will be continued opportunities for engagement around Hickory. Um, I know I'm sure Angela's involved in that. I know all the community participation officers are very, very um, keen to get into the community and hear what you all want to see at Hickory. So please keep that in mind um, as we go into spring, what you'd want to see there. Martha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on that, on that note, is there going to be an effort then to go out in some of the surrounding areas? I'm thinking particularly of all the rental areas and, and East Hatley Road, because they're sort of right up against one end. And, you know, I envision having things like community gardens or a special or mm -hmm. playground for the kids or uh, other, yeah. other things like that. But of course, they're the ones that should say what it is they'd like rather than you know, yeah. So I asked, I, I completely agree. Um, I asked Dave Zomek that specific question and he said, absolutely. There's not only general questions, but they have and will continue to specifically go to the apartment complexes. 
um, and do listening sessions specifically for those residents, uh, as well as the general ones for um, those of us who don't live in those those areas. Okay. Yeah. But it's also I mean, not for nothing, no, Martha, even though that is very clear, it's it's always helpful to add that as a comment on Engage Amherst too, right? So so that is also known that it's it's not just coming from me, right? Um, which I know it's not, but uh, that's also a helpful comment to add if you if you feel like going on the Engage Amherst site. Yeah. Um, other things that are happening, Shalini is on CRC, and so one of the things that CRC has in front of it right now are um, some major a major look at our rental registration bylaw. A group of counselors was working on that. I don't know, Shalini, if you want to speak to that or not. Um, yeah, go for it. Yeah. So uh, actually today, Mandy Chair, the chair of our committee, presented a really good working plan that you all can see at different stages. We're going to be discussing the rental, the residential rental bylaw and how it's being changed to make sure that, um, you know, we maintain the homes that are rented, that the people who are living in them feel safe. Um, the noise regulations around that or and then the fees that are paid because we're getting different uh, right now people just pay a single amount of i think it's hundred dollars to mm -hmm. register a single um, parcel for being able to rent out but we're looking at separating that out so that the bigger apartment at least that i'm just speaking from my side now because this is still in discussion. And, and as you'll see in the work plan, every time there's a different focus, different part of the bylaw is gonna be discussed in detail, but you don't have to come to all, but if you are a renter or a, rent, a landlord who's renting out, and I would definitely encourage you to see how this bylaw might impact you. And um, so that's one thing that we're discussing. The other thing we're doing is we're actually working with UMass to work with the CRC to for this rental bylaw to create a plan of to try out community engagement, how at different points of time, who do we need to reach out to, which residents or different stakeholders, different committees, and what are the different channels of engagement and to kind of lay that out so that we have a systematic plan for engagement for all our different discussions. So that's happening. And next uh, CRC meeting, there'll be a public hearing for the demolition delay bylaw, if anyone is interested in that. And the focus of that is how do we maintain the historic buildings because that's uh, you know, that's what makes a town unique and attractive and we want to retain the history and culture of a town. And at the same time, it is burdensome for the owners to maintain some of these buildings, especially if they're not, you know, they can't be rented or they can't be lived in because they're in such a bad state. And so how do we balance those competing things to make the process fair uh, and at the same time uh, not burdensome for the for the owners. So that's happening. Uh, one thing we are also doing in CRC is we've created a matrix for the different, because there's so many issues, right? That all of us committees can be working on. So whether it's sidewalks, should be should the community CRC be working on, uh, or that's a TSO, sorry, I'm mixing it up. Should that now the town services uh, committee, which Anna and I are in, what should be the focus of our committee and so some of the things that we have in the tso that we're working on is the is the rental um bylaw the residential rental fees we're talking about um economic development of using outdoor spaces maybe we're talking about community engagement and one of the things that i do want to highlight highlight that's in our list uh, of discussion items is the senior services. And um, because we have many seniors living in our town who have, um, um, who have contributed to our town, as we all know, and they continue to live here and continue to contribute to our town. And so, and during COVID, people were impacted adversely and seniors were impacted adversely more than some other groups because of isolation and whatnot. 
So uh, Rosemary, who's here with us, is in this uh, aging committee, and she reached out to us to uh, inform us about the lack of services, especially when we look at relative to other neighboring towns, uh, that we have all, more than 5,000 seniors in our town, and the amount of money that is spent in our town, the staff that we have, the space that we have for our seniors is really uh, not enough and not uh, supportive to, um, to the seniors. So I wanted to invite Rosemary if she wants to share something and we could even use that as a place of discussion for people uh, if you all have ideas or, or even what sort of senior services do you think would be useful to you and what would you like to see in your town that would support you or seniors in your home or your neighbors. So Rosemary, if you wanted to share. Well, we have for many years actually been trying to get um, improvements at the senior center in terms of, yes, there were some renovations that were done, but it's our, our space currently is the biggest problem because we now have rooms that have been taken away from us. And even in the beginning, um, before COVID, um, we had to struggle sometimes to find the right space for our, all of our programs. And now with two rooms taken away from us, we're really in a, in a bad way because we would like to reinstitute the programs that were closed down during COVID. So the space is a big problem, but also we don't have much in the budget in terms of from the town for um, running our programs for um, any kind of supplies that we need. It's a very limited amount of money, com especially compared to other towns in surrounding areas. And we looked at about seven different towns and for the number of people in Amherst, it's um, pretty shocking to see how little support the senior center is getting. So does anyone have questions? <laughs> but I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, mm -hmm. I, as I say, we've been working on um, this for even way back in 2017. But of course, things came back to a standstill during COVID somewhat, but um, it's it's been a struggle for many years. And we're in a building that was never designed to be a senior center. It's a, a very poor space. So. Right. Does, yeah, Martha. So oh, what's, what's the status of things right now in terms of the senior center? Our program now getting, uh, you know, sort of reopened and uh, in person or? What's... We have in person, yeah. The doors during COVID were locked. Now the doors are open. People can come in freely. We have started some programs. We have exer some exercise programs going, mm -hmm. some dance classes going. We have, um, uh, what? well, the, the clinics, the vaccine clinic took up a lot of space for during COVID. So we're able to use some of that space now for the dance and exercise. Um, Haley is working very hard at reintroducing programs. We're gonna start again with the blood pressures and the, um, the ear irrigation clinics and, and things of that nature. She is having, we are having a um, program on April 20th um, called uh, living with hearing loss, and that's being put on by, uh, we're, we're coordinating that with Amherst Neighbors and also with the UMass Hearing Department. And uh, that will be a one hour class. Uh, we have an art class that's going to be in person on April 8th. And there will be an open house on May 11th for mm. people in the community. So there are things starting. I think we all have to realize that with this, people are, a lot of seniors are still reluctant to, to come back. 
You know, mm -hmm. it's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. um, the senior center had once been a high, a beehive of activity, yeah. and that's not going to return in one or two months. I think it's going to take a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, about the the survey, the what is it, dementia friendly or age friendly uh, yeah. survey? I mean, that's being done online. I did it some weeks ago, and so on. But what about the people in Amherst who aren't just on the internet all the time? Is yeah. there is there an effort to to reach out to the people who don't normally tune into such things? Or there is indeed. Actually, 500 of those um, surveys were mailed out randomly from the street list for people over 55. And we've had a pretty good return rate on that, better than most communities in, in, in Massachusetts. Uh -huh. And uh, not surprising for Amherst, I guess. Um, we also uh, did a second mailing for those that didn't return the, the first mailing. And um, uh, oh, the, um, the senior center has been working hard to call people who do not have internet access or may not have internet yeah. access. They have, we have some ambassadors who are calling people uh, who may be, um, be other languages. Mm -hmm. And so there is an effort, quite an effort going forth to get people engaged who are not mm -hmm. uh, easy always to access. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I actually wanted to, um, yeah, I was going to actually welcome um, our state rep, Mindy Dom, who's here, and I actually had a question for her. So thank you for raising your hand um, and welcome. Thank you. And thank you to both my town councilors, because I live in District 5, and also to Rosemary for all of her work on the Council on Aging. Um, I also wanted to point out, though, on the survey, I have checked with Haley to find out if people can continue to fill it out after March 31st, because everything says by March 31st. And she said, yes, people are welcome to continue to send it in. I've had some constituents say that they wanted to provide more information about what they need as they begin to plan to be mm -hmm. uh, aging in place. And they felt there wasn't a way to do that in the survey. And Haley encourages people to also email the senior center directly with mm -hmm. those comments and they'll be added on. And for people to come to the listening sessions because there'll be an opportunity to talk about it. Um, Thank I know you for I, that. Whatever I can also to try to get people to fill it out. I think mm -hmm. it's really important. We need yeah. to document that we are actually failing our seniors in Amherst mm -hmm. and we need a roadmap on how to make sure that we don't we stop and that we correct and the the comments that can come in on this kind of survey can provide both the impetus i think and the support for changing but also the direction on where we have to go so thank you rosemary for everything that you do for our seniors yeah. well I thank you too and, and so I, I just like to say that I appreciate the uh, written uh, bulletin that comes out every couple of months, you know, the printed one. You know, I usually save it and reference it. So hope you can continue that. Oh, I think it's going to be an ongoing thing. And um, Haley has changed the format to make it easier to read. That's right. Shani, I think Mahmood is in the uh, attendees as you again, just so you know. Um, I don't know if you want to bring him bring him back in. Yeah, okay. yeah Rosemary, thank you so much for, well, for your work. So well, yeah. Um, yeah, he's coming in as my doppelganger online. But um, Mindy, did you do you know of funding? We were just talking today, what sort of funding is available for seniors specifically right now? to the opera would, funds or anything? Well, in terms of just general state grants, I would love to be able to set up an opportunity with the Council on Aging, Haley and Elder Services at the state level and have that mm -hmm. conversation. And so Amherst could, you know, we could have a meeting of, so what grants are available from the administration right now in terms of existing programs? Because my sense is that Amherst has not, um, 
kind of applied for any state funding regarding senior services. And so we need to start that process. And a really good way to start that process is to talk with the people who oversee the grants about what's available and what they think um, might, um, uh, Amherst might be eligible for. We are gonna have a second ARPA bill, but I'm not exactly sure when it is. The next budget piece that we're working on as a state is the FY23 operating budget which the House will start to deal with in April. We'll finish our work at the end of April and then give the Senate our budget. They'll do their work in May. They'll probably add things to it as they usually do. And then there'll be a conference committee between the House and the Senate and they'll have to figure out what they're doing. I'm planning on putting in an earmark for the Senior Center um, this year. I'm working with Haley on what that's gonna be for. Um, you know, I'm not a big believer in earmarks supplanting regular programming money. So for example, um, it wouldn't be appropriate for an earmark to pay for the executive director of the senior center, because that's something that if the earmark goes away, we don't want the executive director to go away, but special okay. programs or um, purchases that sort of can be purchased in this year and then they go on for a couple of years, that's perfect for an earmark or a local priority. So, yeah. um, and I'm also, I'll also be looking to see when we get a second ARPA bill, if we get, if and when we get a second ARPA bill, what the house is going to be really saying they want to see in it. So for example, mm. if at that time, we, you know, it's tied to COVID. So we don't know what the pandemic will be doing at the time that we do the second ARPA. If we were optimistic and we'd say, let's say the epidemic would be receding at that point, then it might just be, so how does your community recover? Like how, do, how does it gain resilience? If the pandemic is raging, God forbid, again, then it may mean what does your community need to be able to withstand this, you know, in terms of public health? Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see. Um, my ARPA, so I had my meeting today with House Ways and Means about what some of my priorities were. And I don't know when the ARPA bill will come down. So I'm not sure what, mass, what the state's gonna wanna see as priorities, but the kinds of things that I put in there were like funding for energy sustainability for a new school, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, mm -hmm. um, ex expansion of the ESL program and a new library, like things that could be a lot of money spent over a number of years because the ARPA budget, unlike the operating budget, doesn't have to be spent in one calendar year. It can be spent for up to four years. So trying to think big, although I'm the likelihood of me getting really big money is really tiny, but think you big, know. you never know and you don't get unless you <laughs> ask. So I'm exactly. asking, um, but so I'm asking for big and also for programs that go over a couple of years because I think that Amherst has plenty of those to choose from right now. We have yeah. several construction projects. Um, Mm -hmm. So I think and any little bit helps because yeah. it reduces what the taxpayers have to pay in Amherst. So I do, I do want to ask Mindy kind of, you know, and I'll let you, I'll give you a minute to think on it, but kind of top three things coming down the pike that you think we should tell our, tell the folks in, in our group mm -hmm. today about, um, you can have, you can have three to five if you, if you want, or one, you know, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, and while Mindy is thinking, I do want to let you all know, because she she mentioned ARPA and that pinged a little flag for me, very unrelated flag, but I can make these jumps in my head. Um, mm -hmm. We are approaching budget season for Amherst. So you will have a lot of opportunities to weigh in. If you did not know already, the regional school budget has been released. Um, something that's really exciting is uh, restoring some of the arts, um, the funding for arts so that we can have more full-time mm -hmm. teachers in those roles. Um, and a couple other couple other shifts in that budget. So please, you know, keep an eye on these meetings. What happens is the budget comes to the full council. It then goes to finance for a very, very, very long time. And then it comes back to the council. Um, what's really important to note, just a, a little thing that I think sometimes gets lost. The council doesn't actually dictate specific line items in the budget. Our job is to say yes or no. Um, and if we say no, we send it back to Paul and we can explain why we're saying no, but we cannot as a council specify what changes we want to see. Um, so when you're crafting comments, if you have comments on the budget, what's really helpful is to tell us what you'd want to see, but to understand that ultimately the creation of the budget lies with the town manager. 
Um, and so when we, if we say no, it's gotta be for really good reason. And um, we need to give him some guidance on what we expect to see differently. Um, not necessarily line items, but more of focus or general areas. Um, and so the full calendar of that was in the, the full calendar, the budget breakdown, because they go by kind of like area by area. Um, that's in the finance committee packet. And so if you go back to that calendar of meetings and you go to the finance committee meeting from Wednesday, yesterday, um, it, it should be in there. Uh, yeah. And then uh, I will turn it back to Mindy, but I wanted to let you all know that, that that is coming down, coming down the line faster than we know. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. That's super helpful for me too. I also just want to clarify that earmarks aren't givens in the on the state level yeah. or the federal level. Those are just that that's what we call it when we want to steer direct money to our districts, but they're really amendments to the budget. So they have to be accepted mm -hmm. as an amendment. So just wanting it, that doesn't make it happen. We have to advocate for them. We have to advocate with House Ways and Means as well as colleagues, just to kind of give it a, a context. So some things that are coming up, I also want to say that in June, I'm going to have my first musical bingo at the Senior Center. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, I'm thinking either Broadway shows or 50s music. So I'm open to whatever, but it's going to be musical bingo and I'm psyched. Um, I guess there's a couple of things. We have the budget coming up in the state. And in this case, you should, there are a lot of advocacy organizations that tell their members exactly what they want to see in those lines. They give specific line item numbers with dollar amounts. If you care about something, you definitely should be emailing me. We flag it. We kind of keep this really big spreadsheet with everything that we get from constituents as well as advocacy organizations. It's color coded. It's very, uh, Anna would actually love it. <laughs> love it already. <laughs> <laughs> but, I love um, a good color coding. But um, so it, you should, don't be shy. Let me know what you, what you want to see, where you want to see state money go and how much you want to see go into it. Um, I anticipate that sometime in either April or May, probably May given the budget, excuse me, the House will consider another climate bill. And I really want to mm. kind of like, like, let's applaud for this because when we passed the roadmap bill earlier in the session last March, which said, okay, so here's what we want to do to be able to get to net zero and renewable energy. Lots of folks asked me from the district, okay, so are you going to do anything else though? Or is this just a roadmap? Like, how are you going to actually implement it? And people were very skeptical that the state government was going to do anything more than just say, we should be doing X, Y, or Z without really doing X, Y, or Z. Well, a couple of weeks ago, we, in the house, we passed a huge wind bill. It's like um, a green new deal in Massachusetts for wind. It's about building an industry, a pipeline of workers, training, incentives, research and development. That's money that will come back to uh, UMass. To some extent, we have, they have a whole wind center at UMass Amherst that hopefully is gonna benefit um, and be able to participate in the development of wind as an industry. Um, and it also had um, a great bill that Rep. Lay from Sunderland uh, filed that I was a co-sponsor of that upgrades the grid. It was also incorporated in that because as many of you know, we have to update the grid so that it can accommodate all this renewable energy. So this big wind bill, the House passed, it's now at the Senate and they're dealing with it. And I think they're also coming up with their own climate bill, rumor has it. But there's another rumor that says the House um, Committee on Energy is actually working on a third climate bill. And this will deal with other pieces that weren't included in wind, so likely other renewables like solar. Um, Rep. Lay and I have a bill in that some of the constituents that were interested in this are people who live in co-housing, which would allow multiple houses that are on a single taxed parcel but have separate solar arrays for each household to benefit from the net metering credits. Right now that can't happen. Mm -hmm. Right now, if they're all on a single tax parcel, only one person, um, the entity that the tax parcel's um, name is in, um, gets to benefit from the net metering credits. So we're, we're lobbying and advocating and hoping that our bill, if they're developing a new solar legislation, will be put into that. So that's a good thing. Um, 
and we'll, I'll keep you posted on whether that happens. There are people, Amherst residents who would directly benefit if that got passed. But we are expecting another climate bill. And I, the reason why I really wanna spell this out is because I think it really um, debunks a myth that I've heard a lot about how that House and the Senate aren't doing anything, that we're just lazing around, collecting supposedly enormous paychecks, um, and you know, twiddling our thumbs, and I, that's not what's happening. And I, I really want to stress to people that not only, not even when we're not doing a climate bill, we're not sitting around twiddling our thumbs, but we are that the building is working and the legislature is working and trying hard to deliver legislation that constituents are demanding and that live up to our aspirations. So that's good news. As and I really, I feel like that's a good news story that we all should feel good about. You should feel good about it because I get pushed and prodded and advocated by constituents and that helps me be a better rep. So continue to do that, please. And the last thing- Prodding, gonna... prodding with care, always prodding with care. <laughs> Thank you, Lana. <laughs> and hugs, I take hugs. And yeah, now that COVID <laughs> sort of is leading, I'm, I'm into the hug. I'm getting back into the hugs. Um, the last thing I wanted to say, and it's not really um, at the state legislature, but just to remind everybody that we have statewide elections coming up. Um, the primary in Massachusetts will likely be September 6th. The general election is in November. Every um, statewide office is up for election. That's governor, lieutenant governor, treasurer, auditor, um, secretary of state, I'm forgetting some attorney general, um, are all up for election. Um, there are very few incumbents running, so they're all new fields. I think the only incumbent actually that's running is Deb Goldberg for treasurer. Um, Secretary of State as well. But he's got a challenger. Oh, oh, oh I thought you meant that. It's just no, no, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah. The incumbent who's running, oh. thank you, Anna. An incumbent who's oh. running doesn't have a challenger, but every other race yeah. has a challenger. Mm -hmm. um, and as you know, we passed a bill a couple, uh, about a month or so ago, called the Votes Act that makes vote by mail uh, for every election. Um, the House version of this bill reduced the time that it takes uh, for a person to register before they can vote to 10 days and expanded early voting. Um, the Senate version has um, all those pieces plus <clears throat> same day registration. I supported election day registration in the House, but it did not pass but now it's on the table for the conference committee because since the Senate passed same day registration, the House passed nothing like that. It's a, it's a disputed item. It has to be worked out. It has to be negotiated. So we're all eager to see what happens with that. Um, but if the, if the worst case scenario for people who are election day registration advocates happens, there won't be election day registration, but there'll be a shorter registration period and extended early voting. And actually when you do the math, that's about three days of election day registration <laughs> because it overlaps. Um, so that's kind of like a consolation. Not good enough for a community like Amherst in my opinion. We have too many people who move into the area like two days before the election and should be able to vote. Um, I think that I think I've probably taken up too much of your time. No, that was so helpful. And if people want to talk to you more, you have office hours coming up, I believe. As well. I have office hours. Oh, I better. Um, I don't know them offhand, but I'll. I will raise my. I'll, I can't put them cool. in the chat. Apparently, no I, I'll raise you my hand. Put like, them no. In the other chat, you know the the website community click chat. Um, I'm going to look right now and see if I can find it. So it's in the Q&A. Um, if you click in the Q&A, there is a link, the community. And if you click that, you can very easy, just have to answer one question and you can get into the chat, chat box. I have it. May I just take two seconds just to, I'm opening up the document that has the yes. date. And yeah. yeah, meanwhile, we can take Martha's question, comment. That'd be great. Thank you. Well, uh, since since you're going to have office hours, I really I was going to ask about the climate bill, but I can save that for your office hours. So I just want to say, Mindy, thank you for all you do. I think all of us recognize how hard you work. I mean, we're <laughs> always you. hearing about the things you're doing and advocating mm -hmm. for and everything. So we really appreciate 
uh, all that you do. Thank you so much. I really, I, that means everything to me. You know, I really, I, I do feel like I'm representing 40,000 people. Oh. And so <laughs> if you feel well represented, that's the world to me, truly. So thank you. Um, Mindy, I, oh, sorry. Sorry, my office hours in April um, are going to be Monday, April 4th from four to five, Monday, April 11th from five to six, and Saturday, April 23rd from nine to 10. And it's on my website, which is repmindydom.com. And um, those are mostly by Zoom. In May, we'll see what's going on with the pandemic. I may um, make them in person and I may also resume my coffee hours, but I'm going to actually just, I wanna see what's going on and I want people to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so the coffee hour can be held outside in May or June. So I'm thinking I might start it then. That's a good reminder. Um, so I, when I was still running for office, I did office hours every Friday on the South Amherst Common. And um, every Friday I, well, it wasn't every Friday, the table just lived in my car, but I brought my little card table and my, I didn't have lawn chairs. So I put three like dining room chairs in my car. This poor <laughs> Subaru has seen a lot. Um, but after that, I wrote a, a couple emails to Paul Balcom and it said, South Amherst Common needs some places to sit. Oh, yeah. um, and Paul Balcom came through. So if you have driven by the South Amherst Common, there are four new picnic tables out on there that mm -hmm. I'm so excited about. And it means I feel now I was going to, and now I feel even more excited about doing in-person office hours on, on the common as well. So those are, Mindy, thank you for reminding me. Um, I do plan on bringing those back once it's warm enough. Well, that, um, that's great. I yeah. may be on the South Amherst common with you. Right, we can do joint hours. Um, the other thing, Mindy mentioned the elections that are coming up, uh, this, the primaries, um, which reminds me that at our next council meeting, we will be hearing again from Sue Audette, who is our town clerk, um, who will be presenting us with the new polling locations uh, that are proposed. And those would go into effect for these primaries. Um, and so there, there may be some shifts. It's really important as we went through redistricting um, and re-precincting, there were some shifts um, in, including in district five. And so it's really important for us to look at um, once those are completed, Sue will be doing a whole lot of education. You will not be uninformed about where to vote, um, but it's also helpful if you um, if you are watching those as much as possible and, and staying up on it. Um, we were waiting for things to get approved at the state level and then come back down. And so it's, it's a lot of kind of up and down and back and forth, um, but we will get those locked in before the primary so that everyone knows where to vote and um, when to vote stays the same, but yeah. Uh, are there any other questions that folks have for us while we're here? I know this is more casual, so we wanna make sure everybody feels comfortable asking any questions or things you want us to be focusing on or anything like that. Or Shalini, sorry, go right. ahead. Yeah, no, I was gonna say things that, uh, so basically when we hear from residents, especially that, uh, when you come to, or even, you don't even have to attend. So there are different ways you can speak to the town council and the committees. And the more we hear from residents, that we really are concerned about our senior services. And here is what we need. This is what I need. Or if uh, it's about composting is another thing that's coming up. Sites, uh, you know, pickup uh, of composting or speed. Uh, you find that your streets, the speeding is really dangerous. Or so those are some of the things that the town services uh, and outreach committee is working on. So anything that is impacting your quality of life. And we also love to hear from people what is working well for you, what you're loving about living in Amherst. So we can continue to uphold all of that stuff. So I, I really encourage you all to write to us and the different ways you can write, if you're not sure which committee to send it to, just send it to the town um, council and whoever is in the committee will pick it up, I feel. Uh, there's a public comment uh option and that's on the town council when you go to the town council page on the town website that's another place where you can uh, leave your comments and those get recorded as public comments so people in the public can also see them uh, the third is of course attending our meetings and uh, does everyone here know how to find the committee meetings and how to use a town website here with the calendar and you can click and okay and you can subscribe to the committees that you're interested in following you can subscribe to the updates over there so those are different ways you can reach out to us that's what i wanted to say um and 
talking about district meetings office hours, we also received an invitation from Senior Center to hold one of our district meetings there. So maybe every quarterly or you know every now and then hold the district. So instead of expecting people to come to us, we can hold our district meetings there. So that was, I think, a lovely suggestion. And especially as the weather improves, we can do it outside in the patio or somewhere in the senior center and hold uh, a district meeting there. Or if you have other ideas where you think it would be helpful for the district counselors to go where the people are, you know, we can consider different locations. Um, Any questions from folks or comments? Anything you want to talk about? Yeah, Martha. Okay. I I just wanted to to say that uh, as you know, we now have a director for the Crest program who is just yeah. really fantastic. And you know, if you haven't had a chance to meet him or or hear him or, and so on, you know, make a point of doing so because you know he jumped right in even before his official start date and is trying to meet with groups and and learn as much as he can about Amherst and uh, I heard. Secondhand, he stopped by the Jones Library and wanted to talk to the staff. And mm -hmm. uh, he asked them, he said, what is the hardest thing for you? And they said, getting people to leave at closing time, because <laughs> particularly in cold weather, if, you know, if people are homeless or something. Yeah, right. And he immediately said, okay, when we get mm -hmm. our Crest people set up, we will have our, our Crest folks come at closing time. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, therefore anybody that, that needed help, mm -hmm. they would be there. So, you know, that was just like an immediate response of what can I do to help the community? Yeah. Uh, and so he sounds great. So Mindy, I don't know if you've had a chance to meet him yet, but uh, I hope maybe you, if not, you could sometime. And, yeah, uh, I haven't, but um, I want to, as you may know, Senator Comerford, although she credits me as well, it was mostly is like 95% like her. Um, actually got the money for that position, for that program. Oh, for yes, year. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, um, yeah. And I, would, I really very much want to meet him. It, it, his uh, qualifications sound like perfect. Right He's phenomenal. Um, on April 15th, for folks who are around, there's a community chat with Earl Miller and Paul Bachelman, and that's going to be in person at the Banks Community Center. Oh, um, and, uh, Yep, at 8.30 to 10. Um, and so folks do want to meet him if um, if you can make that, but he's also, yeah, jumped jumped in with both feet, you know, and so please also feel free to reach out and um, and contact him if you do have questions, uh, but he is definitely uh, already getting to work, which is great. Yes, yes. And so my concern is, well, what about the budget for next year? Mm -hmm. you know, is there That's going to be concern. money in the, in that budget? Uh, and I hope that you, you, you town council members can, uh, you know, press for that and speak up about getting an adequate budget for that. Yeah. Well, I also know that Senator Comerford and I and several other legislators are also trying to work with the administration to see um, about state funding. But again, this is one of those situations. I think it's great if the state comes through, but I don't think we should rely on the state. Right, right. I mean, we need to, to, you know, have a certain number of town employees and make that, you know, then go ongoing in an annual uh, way. And then the additional uh, services and so on can come through the grants and, and, and so on, you know, to sort of expand the program or, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because there's going to be a DEI director soon i hope <laughs> very soon mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah so so if people have any comments or uh reactions to what we're talking about uh feel free to use that chat box and it will be anonymous we will not know who because these are difficult conversations i think to have where uh, sometimes people hesitate to speak up publicly but that's where i think this community click is an option where you can share whether you agree or disagree about something that we're talking about, or if you want to add a comment or a question without being identified. So 
Yeah, so I encourage you to use that. Let's see. Any, I just want to leave a few minutes at the end for Mahmoud to just um, tell us a little bit more and to get any kind of feedback, what would make it easier for you to use something like Community Click because we have a uh, Community Click was used in the last round of school um, building meetings. So they have been used by a town in large groups where uh, you know, not everyone had a time to raise their hands and so forth. So it's a way to record all the sentiments and all the comments. Um, and, and, and the artificial intelligent aspect collects and, uh, you know, creates all these aggregates, which is really helpful oh, because it saves town staff time, uh, hopefully. So, so there are a couple of different advantages we're hoping. It's a little challenging initially. Because one of the challenges I'll share is that I have to keep two windows open. I wish it was part of the chat within Zoom, for example, so I could just stay there. But right now I have to keep that other window open and do this. So that seems like a little challenging to me. But if anyone else has um, any comments or what you like about using a an anonymous chat feature like this. And can everyone see the graph as well? Because we have like nine agreed, although we don't know. And maybe Mahmoud, you can answer that question. So when we see the aggregate, nine people agreed, three disagreed, six thought it was important. This is the aggregate, right? And, yes. okay. This is the aggregate over the whole conversation that has been going on. And mm -hmm. I can see that people have been enthusiastic about this and they have been responding to several uh, discussion points, which is these were important. And mm -hmm. people have been agreeing and disagreeing on several points that have been discussed. So uh, this tool allows you to do that without actually speaking up. Uh, if you do not want to, maybe you don't want to get into a confrontation or not feeling comfortable. Uh, to share opinions directly while mentioning your name. Uh, so you could use uh, these options or also the chat options to basically write down if you have something in your mind. It's completely anonymous. If there's no way for us to though, like we are the developers of this tool, but um, even for us, there is absolutely no way to know uh, who's actually writing this. So your um, identity is, anonymity is protected. And then after the fact, how do we use this information? We're able to track the agrees and all these different sentiments according to the timestamp? Yes, uh, that's in development right now. So the way we are trying to develop the system is that generally these public meetings has open data. So uh, the meeting transcript or the video will be available for the public. At the same time, we will match these reactions and responses mm -hmm. and also the chat messages with the timestamp so that we know what was discussed when, uh, which are the topics that people thought are very important and needs to be discussed, and on which uh, topics people agreed and which topics people disagreed so that um, the town can have a better picture of all the discussions that went on and how people responded to these things. Great, thank you. Any other questions people have about the, the app itself? So how many of you actually, I mean, it shows 10 people. Is that 10 people or is it 10 agreements? 10 times there was an agreement. Yeah, so I'm looking at the dashboard right now. So it seems like um, there are 14 attendees uh, who has been using Community Click today. Um, mm. There has been 10 agreements on several topics. Uh, four of them are unique participants. Uh, there has been seven important, uh, three disagrees, one confused, uh, one other, and the other one is unsure. Uh, so from the dashboard, we can see these reactions in real time while this is going on. And also from the attendee side of things, whenever someone expresses a concern or uh, presses a button, you can also see that live bar chart that shows you how people has been responding to these um, discussion points that have been going on. So the 10 is really the number of times 
somebody agreed. People it's not agreed the total number of people. Can we see how many people are participating? Because it could be the same person. It could be just one person who's clicking, I agree, I agree, I agree. Yes. So it's not like, um, yeah. Yes. Um, so to do that, um, I don't have the option to share my screen, but uh, Shalini can probably do that. If you are, if you joined in as an organizer, mm -hmm. um, at the top view, there is a button that looks like a speedometer. If you can uh -huh. click on that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that will uh -huh. allow you to see the detailed yeah. dashboard where you can actually see um, how people have been responding to these things and uh, what are the trending um, conversations, trending reactions and the rate and a bunch of other information. Yeah, does anyone want to see that, what that looks like behind the scenes? Uh, I mean, I can share the screen if there is any curiosity. If not, we can leave it to the nerds to figure it out. <laughs> Um, but yeah, what it looks like is there are 14 attendees, so 14 people signed into this, and there are two active participants in the last minute. Yes. Okay. And agree seems to be the trending reaction. Okay. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, let's see see anything else coming up for you all anything you'd like to see us work on or um i had one request uh mm -hmm. from the attendees who has been participating today uh so if you have been using comment to click uh we would love to know um how to improve the experience and if there's something that confused you how is the how does the reaction work or how does the tool work? Uh, we would love to know so that we can have a better expert, we can create a better experience for the attendees. Uh, the objective for this tool was to basically provide you another way when um, raising a hand and etc. all this, sometimes it um, takes up a lot of time and sometimes people do not have the opportunity to speak up in the first place. Uh, so this kind of tool is a companion app uh, for people who want to share their opinions uh, while not waiting for um, a chance and also maybe they want to keep silent but share their opinions nonetheless uh, with the security of being anonymous um, so yeah mm -hmm. if, uh, anyone if, if you have any uh, comments or suggestions for us to improve the whole experience would love to know that thank you thank you Mahmoud. And I just want to also mention that Mahmoud, uh, who's part of the team at the Computer Science Department, UMass, basically got this grant to improve participation amongst people whose voices are not heard, typically heard, or how to include, bring more engagement in, um, what was, how was it defined, Mahmoud, the population that you were uh, underserved population uh, Under people sure. who generally do not have the opportunity uh, time wise um, or also ability wise and also mm -hmm. people who might not be able to um, join in at the appropriate time um, they can basically share their opinions like this right so it does still involve using technology and so in that way it may not be really truly accessible but on the other hand, it does make it accessible to people who have technology but are busy with their work or with their kids or home, you know, homework that they're not able to participate in the meetings. And so the the other technology that they have is called small towns, which is similar to engage, but that's the parallel uh, technology that people can go on that and share their ideas and, and so forth. Um, if they can't attend a meeting. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anything else that we can talk about? Um, I don't have anything else on my left, Shani, if, if there aren't any other questions. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you all so much for, for joining us. Um, and we will 
Next time is an official district meeting. Um, and so if there are folks that you would like to hear from at those district meetings, please let us know. Uh, last time we heard from Kathy Shane about the elementary school. So if there's other folks that you'd like us to invite, can't guarantee it, but we can always invite them. Um, please, please let us know, send us an email and we will do our best. Um, other than that, thank you all so much for, for joining. Yeah, and can we just let them know ahead of time, if you all want to mark your calendars, the meeting dates are, I think the next one is April 28th. And it's generally the last Thursday, unless it's con conflicting with a town services committee meeting. So, so it's basically, if you want to mark it down, write down, I will send a newsletter out with the upcoming dates so that you can mark your calendars way ahead of time. So it's April 28th. Is a district meeting May 26th will be the office hours and then June 23rd and then July 28th but we will send it out um, to you all by email also so but for now that's all thank, thank you, you town so councillors oh, thank you, well, thank you, thank you, both of you. For I, being here. I've heard from some people in other districts that their town councillors never schedule meetings like this so we really appreciate yeah. that you're very faithful here in District 5 of, of keeping us informed and giving us a chance to participate. So thanks and good luck. Absolutely. Thank you for we wanted to us. participate even more and come <laughs> up because you all really know what's happening in your group, in your neighborhoods. So definitely keep us informed and share your ideas with us. And just today I was at the senior center and I learned so much over there. And hopefully we'll start working more with the senior center and doing things and yeah so thank you all so much see you soon everybody thanks everybody bye bye good night shalini i have to run too are you you're good yes um right. wait let me stop the but do we want to no i don't think we need to really talk about it. i mean i think we can just confirm those dates but you don't have to do it you're now. still if recording you... oh, just so you know yeah how do i stop it Stop. There's a little like step. Yeah, it's okay. You got it? Okay. Stop. Yeah.